Hi, and welcome to our Creating Better Technical Communication videos with Camtasia 2021. My name is Aaron or Yuri Kolber, and I work for OnTarget Communications. Unfortunately, due to a scheduling hiccup, I'm not able to be with you here this morning, and so I recorded the presentation during the night, of course, with Camtasia, and Anton Bolin from TechSmith is with us in the chat and he'll be able to answer any of your questions live. So let me just get started with why it is that Camtasia is in fact relevant uh, and why it is that video creation is relevant to us as technical writers. So there is undoubtedly demand in the market for the video medium. Customers are looking for it. It's also good for us as technical writers to engage in video. It enlarges, broadens our capabilities of what we are delivering, the value that we're delivering. Largely, this is due to the move to HTML5 based documentation. Um, the fact that the demographics have shifted. We've got a lot of younger people with uh, um, shorter attention spans, people who have grown up on YouTube, and that's their go to mechanism is looking for information via video. There's broadband nearly everywhere, which makes it possible to deliver the video. And it's also closely related to what we have been doing as technical writers for quite a while uh, using um, topic-based writing. In videos, we, this translates to video nuggets, to short videos that are explainer-type videos or tutorial-type videos that allow you not necessarily to replace the traditional documentation, but to augment it. And so, uh, the next question that we need to answer before we show you Camtasia is why Camtasia? There are many video creation and production tools. Uh, at OnTarget, we certainly use Camtasia as the go-to tool. So do many of our customers. Uh, it's a nice balance between power and capabilities that are required in order to deliver the sort of videos that we need to create while at the same time not requiring you to go to university and do a doctorate in video production. By that I mean it's a good tool for people who do video sometimes as part of their job. It's not overly complex, as you will see. Most important, I think, to me is the fact that TechSmith is highly responsive with Camtasia to what's happening on the market. We are seeing major versions delivered every year and a few minor versions, patches and updates happening during the year, which allow us to roll out new capabilities that match what the standard in the market at any point in time is. So with that, uh, let me get started and show you Camtasia and let's do a couple of editing tasks in Camtasia. The scenario that we're going to look at here is a short explainer video that we want to create for technical writers who need a dummy Latin content generated inside Word so that they have content they can experiment with when it comes to styles, layout, etc. To start off with, this is an, what an empty Camtasia looks like. Okay, so we have uh, the canvas, which is where we're going to see what we record and wh where the, any special effect annotations are going to appear. On the left, we have the media bin, which is where our recordings are going to go. We're going to place them on the timeline so that we can decide uh, what comes first and what comes later. On the extreme left, we have a whole bunch of menu options which allow us to insert things like annotations and transitions and animations. We'll have a look at that a little bit later on. Uh, notice at the bottom we have a number of tracks. You can have any number of tracks and it makes a lot of sense from a reusability point of view, a multilingual approach, etc. to have stuff separate on separate tracks. In other words, the screen recording on one track, the narration on another track, the background music if you're going to use it on yet another one, uh, so that it's easy to manage individually. And also, for example, to have narrations in multiple languages which live on different tracks 
we can then enable and disable individual tracks in order to give us the ability to have different language narrations for the same video, for example. So single sourcing type of ideas. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the record button on the top left and that's going to set off our recorder. We have already launched Word and what we'll do is we will record the screen as we demonstrate what needs to be done. So here we go. We've clicked on the red button. We can set the area of the screen that is going to be recorded. We can switch on the camera and we can switch on the microphone so that uh, you can hear me. What we're then going to do is click on record. We'll get a countdown and then we need to start talking through the video. So we're going to click in the document and we're going to start typing equals lorem, L-O-R-E-M, open brackets, close brackets and press enter. Now, what we have here is just dummy Latin text. We can go one up on that. Inside the brackets, we can add the number of paragraphs and the number of sentences per paragraph. And now we get a lot more text that we can format. Now, back in Camtasia, I have got the recordings, both of the camera and on the screen, um, sitting in my media bin and I drag them onto the timeline. So track one is the screen and track two is what came from the camera. This is a combined video and audio. One of the things I might want to do is to right click and separate the audio and video so I can deal with them independently. It might make sense to rename these tracks to make it easier later on to manage the different tracks. So I can go and uh, double click on the track one and call it the, the screen. Um, track two is uh, camera. And by the way, uh, of course you don't have to double click. You can right click and say rename. And this one will be narration. Now, there are a couple of things that I still want to do here. So uh, the camera is taking quite a big picture. It's sitting in the middle of my screen. Uh, first of all, there are a couple of things I'd like to do. There's a lot of extra vi video around my face, uh, which is unnecessary. So at the top, I can go and click on this button over here. Okay which will allow me to crop corner over here and I will crop the stuff appropriately. So here is maybe an appropriate size for the video. It's also sitting in front of everything, which doesn't make a lot of sense. And so what I might want to do is move it to the bottom. It might be too big still, so I can click on the arrow to resize. And I might want to make it slide out to the side. Now, let's look at a couple of the things that are now new in uh, 2021 in Camtasia, which allow you to create a slightly sexier type of uh, video. So what we are going to do here is we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to visual effects and one of the new things in visual effects is the ability to round the corners. Okay. Um, and so here it is corner rounding and I'm going to go drop it on top here or um, I can drop it on the timeline. It would be the same thing. Notice that on the side in the properties pane, I now have corner rounding, uh, which is an additional setting. At the moment, uh, it's not very obvious because the radius is quite small, but I can increase the radius and make it sort of a shape that I prefer uh, using. It doesn't have to be a rectangle or a uh, circle. I can switch off 
some of the corners and then it becomes like a teardrop shape but for now this is fine what i also want to do is i want to move this to the side one of the things i can do is i can say let's start with this in the middle and then as we start talking i will move it to the left and so one of the things that i can do is i can go to animations and i can insert a custom animation here and then making sure that the end of the animation is selected um, i can move this guy over here so what will happen is as we move into the i'm using the playhead to scrub through the video so that i can see the effect um, that's fine but uh, what we're going to do is in order to enhance this this effect one of the things that we could do is we could go to the visual effects again and we could do a motion blur which i can drop on here and what that will do is while it's moving to add to the effect um, it will in fact blur slightly to enhance the effect of the move we can carry on scrubbing through our process we're talking through the recorder tab and we're going we're talking about um, switching on the camera and switching on the microphone and then we're talking about clicking the record button and there is a countdown we're starting to type so far so good you will see if i scroll to the end a couple of things that we have an extension we recorded too much in the camera and the audio uh, so that it extends beyond the end of the screen recording what i can do is i can just grab the end and drag them in so that they end at the same time so what i could do now is i could play this and I could see what happens. And press enter. Now, what we have here is just dummy Latin text. We can go one up on that. Inside the brackets, we can add... So, this seems to work okay. Uh, the only thing is it's, it's a bit abrupt uh, in the sense that there is uh, nothing sort of... There's nothing starting it off. It just sort of drops straight into the beginning of the video. It might make sense to have an opening sort of scene that sets the scene, that gives us the title. We can go to the library. And in the library, you will find that there's a whole bunch of elements. There are icons that we can use. There's intros, which start off the, the, the video. There can be lower thirds, which allow you to put some labels at the bottom of the screen. Um, there's some music tracks. Uh, you don't need a license for them. Typically used for background music. We'll come to that in a second. And then there are outros, are the opposite of the intros. They're how we close off video. So let's look at the intros, test it out by double clicking it, or we can just drag it onto our timeline. And then I can scan through it, if you like. I can scrub by grabbing my playhead and moving it over this portion over here. So I can see that it will start with the screen. There'll be some circles and squares and then there is some text that comes out of there obviously uh, text myth camtasia is great but not for the purpose of my video have a look on the right hand side we can see that we can change all of these elements it makes life really easy so let's take the text myth one okay which is in the box and we can call random latin text and then we can say the title, which is currently Camtasia in uh, Microsoft Word. 
and then we can instead of the subtitle which has got the textmet.com that's quite useful if you want to learn more about uh, Camtasia but for now we can either delete it completely or put in some advert for ourselves uh, um, training department or something like that or the name of the company now let's just have a look then so what would happen is I would sort of it would roll through it random Latin text and Microsoft Word and then the video starts well one way to make this a more smooth transition is to in fact use transitions and what we can do is there's a whole bunch of different transitions there are literally there are 70 odd new transitions that have been added we can look at different types of transitions currently i've got wipes you will see that in the earlier parts of the video i've been using the paint swipe so i'll stick to that what i'm doing is i'm dragging it down and notice it's highlighting in yellow where i can apply the transition so i'm going to apply it in there so the video will now look like this if i scrub through it or let me play it okay so where's the music coming from i've pre-added background music the problem with it is that when used effectively it adds a lot to the video but when used ineffectively like now it's too loud it's drowning out what the person who's doing the narration is saying again a great new addition in Camtasia 2021 is the ability to go to the audio effects and emphasize one of the tracks so what I want to do is I want to emphasize I'm going to drop it on top of the narration track and I'm going to tell it I can play with the balance here. So I'm going to tell it that I wanted to go to say 93% narration or somewhere around there. In other words, what I'm saying is reduce the volume of the music. Let's see what happens. So if I start playing over here, you will see that the music is quite loud. So the moment that the recording of my voice speaking comes in, the music gets turned down automatically. We could do this manually if we wanted to uh, previously in previous versions, but it was an exercise that was quite that took quite some doing. Whereas now, pff, trivial. So where do we get the background music? How do we fit it in? I'm going to go to the library again. Here are the music tracks and I can select a music track and just drag it on onto the timeline where I want the music to start. Now I already did this so I'm going to scroll up but notice that the background music that I put in is looking rather odd. It's, it's sort of faded away. The reason is because I clicked on the lock button on the track. So first of all, we can go and uh, rename track five to background uh, music. So we know what it's for. What I wanted to ensure is that while I was fixing this video and I was chopping things up and I was cutting things out using all these tools over here, I wouldn't inadvertently also chop some of the music track very often what we do when we want to cut things is we drag these handles to highlight an area that we want to get rid of problem is it gets rid of everything all the way across all the tracks so if i don't want the screen track to be affected i can just lock it for now and then when I cut, it will only affect the track that I'm on, not the lock tracks. So I'm going to unlock this guy. So I'll click on it and delete it. I no longer need to lock the top one. Now we can actually see the music track. It doesn't run quite far enough. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, copy that music track over again. While we're here, let's look at uh, some annotations. Notice that we were talking about 
clicking the record button at one stage and then we clicked on the record button. If we, I mean, it's a very obvious record button, but if I'm worried that people might miss it, I can add an annotation and let's see how easy that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to annotations and in annotations, I have a whole bunch of different types of annotations. So I could grab one of these, for example, um, drag it onto the screen into the right place and then double click on here to edit the text. Okay, and say record so that it's obvious that it's there. So yeah, let's take this below the music track so it's easy to understand where it goes. So we need to see how long we want it for. Uh, so we want it to disappear here. So I'm going to grab its back end put it over here and I'm going to maybe uh, sort of assign it a little bit earlier than that so I can start I can start it over here I can one once I'm here and I've got it sitting where I want it so what I can do over here is change the size if I want make it bigger smaller bolder change the font change the alignment Let's see how that looks now. So uh, I'm going to draw back and here we are talking about the camera. We are now talking about the microphone. And just before we get talking about the record button, I'm highlighting the record button. And when I click on it, um, I want to make that record annotation go away. It's appearing rather suddenly and disappearing rather suddenly. What I can do is I can go to the behaviors and I can assign some behaviors here. Like I might want it to fade in and fade out. It's a, it's a gentler video interaction. Here is a fade behavior. I drag it onto my annotation. And now I can see what will happen when it comes in, what's gonna happen during the time that it's showing, and what's going to happen when we come out. I can change that. I, I started off with fade, but I've got lots of behaviors that are more energetic than a fade. Let's see what it looks like. So as I scrub, it's going to, using the playhead, it's going to fade in and then it's going to fade out at the end. What we'd also like to do perhaps is add a thank you at the end of my video to let people know for sure that the video is finished rather than just abruptly stop. One of the things that has been added into Camtasia 2021 is something called Media Mat. Now it's become very simple and hence easy to do. I'm going to go to the library and I'm going to look at the motion backgrounds and choose something uh, that has some motion in it. I'll dump it down here. What I can do then is I can put an annotation on top of it. I'm going to put an annotation over here and let's stretch it out. I need this annotation to be a little bit uh, bigger, a little bit sort of, so let's choose a bolder font and I want to make it bigger. Double click on this and say thank you and we can stretch it out I can achieve this effect by going to the visual effect and applying a media mat and notice what has happened so as we get here the video behind, the lights are moving, but I'm seeing them through the characters of the text. In other words, it's as if I filled the text with a video fill. Now, it would make sense to make, drop a transition here, so we can go to transitions. And I think you're seeing the, the principle that we're using here is we're building things gradually. 
this is very similar to sort of agile approach. We have short sprints where we create the main part of the video. We do the narration. We play with background music. We add some intro. We add some back end. And I've been doing it fairly slowly because I've been explaining as we've been going through. In effect, you can do these videos very, very rapidly. It's one of the big advantages of Camtasia. So we can go to transition and we can like maybe uh, just put some more arcs down here. And let's see what happens. So uh, as we cycle through it, I'm getting some transition by getting some paint arcs flowing across. Uh, and here we are. So, of course, uh, one needs to judge how, how long once that one wants that thank you for. And it would make sense to then trim the background video. Thank you. I hope you found the session useful and Anton is ready to take any questions that you have in the chat. Have a great day. Bye.